Let's see, how about how about yourself, Dina? Sure. I mean, first I want to thank um, both Aaron and Jared for uh, for having me and Sandra Dow for having me today. I'm I'm very honored to have the opportunity um, to talk today. Um, my um, experience with crypto is a little bit different. Um, so my background is well. First of all, I work at Paul Hastings, which is a global law firm. I'm in the fintech practice. I do mainly government affairs work, strategy work, and um, and uh, advisory work. And I um, spent a big chunk of my career uh, working on Capitol Hill. I worked on the House Financial Services Committee and the Senate Banking Committee and the Treasury Department. I was um, involved with almost every major piece of financial services legislation over the past 20 years. Um, and uh, a few that are relevant, um, you know, obviously in the early 2000s, we were having sort of these discussions, uh, sort of pain points in terms of moving online. I guess this dates me, but uh, I've been around for too long. But so things like e-sign, um, before e-sign, it was state by state. Uh, legal uh, signatures were not uh, considered legally binding. And um, it's kind of interesting because Gensler was at Treasury then and negotiating with us from the SEC and uh, he was very, he wanted a lot of exceptions. He was very worried about things getting lost online. Um, I can talk further about that, but th check 21, which made checks, um, electronic checks also considered to be legal um, versus flying checks all over the country. I have no idea how they all got to where they needed to be. I saw a check processing plant once. And um, I think the most relevant is um, when I was with Senator Pat Toomey, um, I was the lead author on most of the Jumpstart Our Business Startups Act or the Jobs Act, which um, just turned, had its 10th anniversary uh, two weeks ago. And um, the Jumpstart Our Business Startups Act or the Jobs Act makes it easy for, easier for companies to raise capital in the public markets, but just as importantly to, in the private markets. So my work on the Jobs Act is very interrelated to how I got into the crypto space. I came into it differently. During the Jobs Act, one of the provisions um, raised the, for um, the Jobs Act, once you went over 500 shares, you had to become a publicly reporting company. The number hadn't been raised for many, many years. And we raised the 500 to 2,000 excluding employment. In, in yeah, excluding employee employees and um there were, it was a very large coalition that wanted that but uh, most importantly and relevant to this was there were private trading share platforms um that were trading um were providing liquidity um in things like facebook and twitter before they went public and um obviously it would be beneficial for them to raise the shareholder limit Fast forward, some years pass, the Jobs Act gets implemented, industry grows around it. I come to Paul Hastings and my first client is one of those private trading share platforms. Um, it became known as Templum later. And um, they were, um, they had to do um, a little bit of back and forth with the SEC, but they became a private, um, Trade, they became a, um, a registered ATS and broker dealer that could trade digital assets as securities. I think their plan was very much to provide liquidity to illiquid assets. You always hear about sort of like real estate, art, um, other types of things that um, just are, can be illiquid. We were, um, so we started doing uh, back in 2017 when the ICO craze started, uh, we started meeting with, um, you know, the principals at the SEC. Um, so a lot of them are former colleagues of mine. Um, obviously, some other folks at the SEC, um, folks in the financial services, health financial services and Senate banking committees. And um, obviously we got a lot of glazed over eyes and, you know, people were confused, but our, our message back in 2017 was um, we really want the SEC to provide clarity so that, um, I know this is going to sound funny, so that we don't have regulation through enforcement. 
unfortunately, we were like the um, the skunk at the garden party because the entities that did exist in terms of you know one think tank and a trade association um, they were opposed to all regulation, and so um, we were just different than everyone else. I saw um, crypto from a different perspective than other people. My view was, oh, like, why not just, um, the problem is the securities laws, which I knew we just touched the surface on the Jobs Act. And so I, um, my view was, okay, well, SEC, Jay Clayton's there. He wants to make it easier for companies to raise capital, both in the public markets and private markets. He spoke about it right away. And my thought was, why don't we just like loosen up the accredited investor standard more? Why don't we just do other things to amend the securities laws, which are blocking retail investors from investing in a lot of startups. So you have reg CF and reg A plus, but not a lot of room for um, investors to invest in startups. And that's why you have a lot of millennials and Gen Z in the crypto space. The other thing that I was thinking was you also had a Republican Congress back in 2017. And there was this um, effort um, by McHenry and Maxine Waters to again, change the securities laws and um, really make it easier to raise capital. I, um, it did not you know, pass in the Senate, but um, I also thought, why is the crypto industry not lobbying on this that a number of people that push um, could have made a lot of difference um, in terms of making the securities laws work um, for digital assets. So that's how I got into it. I will finish by saying I then um, was asked, um, I know when you're on the Hill, you know a little bit and do financial services, you know a little bit about everything in financial services and you can put the pieces together. Um, most people, they know their one area. So they know like in law, they'll, they'll be a securities lawyer or a money transmission lawyer or a banking lawyer, but they don't necessarily know how to connect all those uh, dots together. And um, so I, um, with my perspective, um, I wound up speaking before pre-COVID or pre-COVID, I wound up speaking all over, mostly California, New York, um, all over and also did a ton of writing, etc. cetera. And um, so there you have it. Um, and um, some of what I have said, and I'm not gloom and doom, I'm really a believer in digital assets and, and blockchain. Um, but some of sort of my predictions have been, um, per, you know, um, pretty spot on. Awesome, Dina. Thanks. And uh, I think, you know, Steve, if if you want to, um, you know, try to follow up uh, real quick, and then we'll really get into the meat of this. You know, I, Dina makes it hard to follow up to that, right? <laughs> uh, that's okay. I'll give it a shot. Uh, 